Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the Watchman Prayer Teachings. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious love for us. Father, we thank you so much for your precious and holy word. Father, we pray you teach us to pray. Father, we pray you teach us your ways. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation in your word, your love, and your will for us. Father, we pray that you grant us answers and solutions. Father, we pray you grant us word in due season. Father, we thank you so much for your mighty hand. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Father, we pray your healing anointing drive out every form of sickness, every form of disease. And Father, we pray your anointing break every yoke, remove every burden and break every chain. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. It's so wonderful to study about prayer. And as I have said, uh, the assignment on this ministry is to teach on prayer. And that's why we have started the Watchman Prayer Teachings every Friday. So don't forget, every Friday we will be uh, publishing the Watchman Prayer Teachings. Listen to them. It will strengthen your prayer life. It will help you to stand as a watchman over your life, over your family, over your churches, over fellow believers and servants of God. God and the nation and whatever assignment God puts in your hand, you will learn how to be an effective, faithful watchman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, then let's go to our text. We have chosen three texts for this particular series. Um, there is a very reason behind that, like I explained in the previous message. Let's go and read them. Go with me to Isaiah 62. I say 62, let's read verse 6 and 7. I have said, notice who have said, who has done this? God Almighty. I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. It's a 24 hour duty. Right? The Holy Ghost may move upon you anytime. Right? And uh, as you grow in God, you will learn how to yield to those promptings and pray. Hallelujah. You that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. This is not a time to shut up. This is a time to lift up our voice and to pray. And God will hear and answer our prayers. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. And you have been given the privilege to approach God. By our Lord Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, through the name of Jesus, by the mighty Holy Spirit, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You can approach God boldly to receive grace, to receive answers. Hallelujah! Right? So this is not a time to keep silent. This is a time to lift up our voice and pray. Hallelujah to Jesus! And give him no rest. You know, some people think, I, oh my, I don't want to trouble God, man. God is saying, don't give me rest. <laughs> God is not a man. He's not going to be, uh, you know, wearied and tired because you pray too much. <laughs> you know, God is saying, don't give me rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So watchmen not only watch and protect, they also are involved in the building. You know, here the Bible is saying, till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. A lot of building and glorifying is involved in this, you know, in order to be Jerusalem to become a praise. A lot of things are involved. Right? Not just protection, but also building, not also imparting. Many things are involved in this. Hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. So we see here that God is setting watchmen over city. This also would include nation. Hallelujah. Now notice in uh, Ezekiel, God said to um, Ezekiel, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel, over the entire nation. Hallelujah. And notice this verse. Let's go to Ezekiel. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go to chapter 22. And let's look at the last verses. 
the last two verses and i sought for a man notice god is looking for people what kind of people that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for a man that who would stand before god for what for the land say for the land for the land there god is saying i'm setting up people right for this purpose so that they will look to me they will pray and i will work in the city of jerusalem now when we stand and pray in our cities god would work in our city also hallelujah and stand in the gap here god is saying i'm looking for people there he's saying i've set people here god is saying i'm looking for people i sought people i searched for people hallelujah who would stand in the gap before me for the land say for the land so this is biblical people standing and praying for the land for the nation is biblical it's it's not some far fetched idea or some you know extremist crazy uh, you know charismatic fanatic idea no this is biblical idea right this is god's thoughts that we are reading these are ideas of god these are thoughts of god god is looking for people who would stand before him for the land say for the land that i should not destroy it so here we see god is looking for people who would stand before god and turn away judgments we see moses doing this for israel when god wanted to when god was um, about to judge israel right god said i will destroy them right and moses stood before god right and he turned away the judgment here god is saying i am looking for people like that who would stand before me and turn away the wrath of god turn away the judgment hmm hallelujah you know god we we need people like that in india today we need people who would stand before god and turn away the judgments and I'm, as as i have spent time before god god has spoken to me about various things concerning india right and one of the things that I, you, know, you need to keep in mind is look to god for mercy upon india particularly the northern part of india stand before god ask him for mercy ask him for mercy hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right then now notice uh, let's go to okay let's read verse 31 also therefore have i poured out my indignation upon them why did god pour out his indignation because there was nobody to pray if there was somebody to stand before god and to pray and to call upon his mercy he wouldn't have poured out the poured out the judgment do you see this so judgments which god himself speaks speaks god himself pronounces upon a land right can be turned away if people would stand before him and pray and ask for his mercy hallelujah hallelujah to jesus um i want to move further but then you know, i am there is a leading from the holy spirit so i will go to amos go with me to the prophet amos let's read uh, chapter 7 verse 1 Thus has the Lord God showed unto me and behold he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth and lo it was the latter growth after the king's mowings and it came to pass when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land then i said o lord god forgive i beseech thee by whom shall jacob arise for he is small not as god showed a vision of grasshoppers just just <laughs> ruining all the harvest right and uh, once god showed it to amos amos lifted up his voice and prayed for god's mercy and forgiveness right and notice verse 3 the lord repented for this it shall not be said the lord now sometimes people think um, you know when god shows something it has to come to pass if it didn't come to pass you know he's a wrong, false prophet wrong vision and all that now many times god shows us things to show so that we can prevent it sometimes god will show you something so that you can prepare for it 
do you understand that you remember when god showed the vision to pharaoh concerning what is going to happen in egypt that was for preparation that cannot be stopped but um, the uh, the plenteous years and then the seven consecutive years of a man could not be stopped what could be done was prepare for it you understand that here god is showing a warning vision why so that uh, it can be stopped through prayer that's what amos the prophet did he prayed for it and as a result of that prayer it was stopped do you see the difference hallelujah we need to learn the and ways of god hallelujah to jesus now is verse 4 thus has the lord god showed unto me and behold the lord god called to contend by fire and it devoured the great deep and did eat up a part then said i o lord god cease i beseech thee by whom shall jacob arise for he is small notice verse 6 the lord repented for this this also shall not be saith the lord god hmm? do you see this so this is something we need to learn to do when god reveals something to us often he is revealing these things to us so that we can stop that by prayer by intercession hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right let's go to our second text hallelujah to jesus ephesians chapter 6 let's read verse 18 and 19 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me so paul by the holy spirit is saying every believer ought to learn how to watch in the spirit by prayer right watch over whom there we saw that we are supposed to watch over cities and the land and the nation here god is teaching about watching over fellow believers and servants of god hallelujah hallelujah to jesus and if you will yield yourself to praying in tongues god will use you to watch over saints whom you don't know all over the world servants of god all over the world hallelujah last week we saw how the prayer of a woman who was in germany was used to protect reinhard bonke to stop his death and to raise him up so that he can continue serving god hallelujah so here that is another aspect of watching and then let's go to matthew matthew 26 here god is talking about watching in our personal life hallelujah verse 40 and 41 and he comes unto his disciples talking about jesus and finds them asleep and saith unto peter what could you not watch with me one hour here jesus is talking about watching with him right because jesus was going into enter trouble and persecution and suffering so jesus asked us these three disciples peter john and james to watch with him and they failed in that right and then verse 41 talks about watching in our personal lives watch and pray that you enter not into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak so notice this is talking about watching and praying in our personal lives in our personal lives hallelujah notice jesus is watching and praying to overcome a temptation in his life Today I want to show you how Jesus watched and prayed. Hallelujah. Now notice um what is Jesus doing here? Let's uh read from verse 36. Then comes Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Jesus knows by the Holy Spirit that he is going to be taken as a prisoner. See um the Holy Spirit is involved in watching and praying right notice how Paul said praying always in the spirit right that's talking about by the Holy Spirit right both Holy Spirit helping you to pray and also Holy Spirit directing your prayer hallelujah hallelujah to Jesus here Jesus knows by the Holy Spirit that he is going to be taken today right 
Hallelujah. If you go at the beginning of that very same chapter, Matthew 26.1, the chief priests, they were not planning to um, take Jesus captive uh, on that day. They were not planning his arrest on Passover. In fact, they wanted to avoid it because they were afraid that a riot may happen. You know, people all over Israel, including people of Galilee, where Jesus had huge amount of following, right? You know, all those people will come to Jerusalem. So if they arrested Jesus during that time, they were scared that there may be a riot. So they wanted to avoid arresting Jesus on the Passover. But you know, Jesus is the Passover lamb. So Jesus had to uh, die on Passover. You know, the Jewish days, they wore, don't work like us. You know, we normally calculate days. Some people, you know, in their mind, the sunrise is the beginning of the day. Sunset is the end of the day. Now, the 24-hour period starts at the midnight, you know. For, for in the Western world, the day starts in the midnight after 12 a.m., right? 12 a.m. to 12 in the night. But the way God looks at it, from Genesis and uh, that's where the Jews got it from the day begins at sunset right for them uh, the day is from the evening of a particular day right? when the sunset of a particular day to the sunset of the next day right so the Passover began at sunset on this particular day Jesus was arrested at the beginning of the Passover and he was crucified and he died and was buried before the end of the Passover day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So Jesus is announcing here, look at this, verse 2, 26. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. The Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So Jesus knew by the Holy Ghost when he is going to be arrested and when he is going to be crucified. No, notice the direction of the Holy Spirit, right? And then here, you know, during the Passover uh, supper, Jesus is talking about how he Judas is going to betray him. And he even tells Judas what you're going to do, do it quickly, right? So Jesus is being directed by the Holy Spirit throughout this whole, um, you know, uh, evolving of the situation. Hallelujah. Now, uh, look at verse 36. So, Jesus knows that what he is going to go through. So, he is going to prepare for it. Verse 36. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Then comes Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with them Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. This is when he says, watch along with me. Hallelujah. Now, verse 38. Then saith he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Hallelujah. Now, notice Jesus went um, and started praying. Right? Watching and praying goes hand in hand. You watch by the Holy Spirit. You are aware of what is going to happen. You are being prompted by the Holy Spirit. You are being led by the Holy Spirit. And you are praying in the Spirit with the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Hallelujah. Hmm. Now, we are not given the whole prayer. Everything Jesus spoke, he, spoke, he prayed for an hour here. Right? We are just given the gist of what he prayed. And, um, and Jesus repeated these prayers three times. So, it stands to reason that he prayed for around uh, three hours here. Hallelujah. Now, um, notice verse 42. He went again the second time and prayed saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass from me except I drink it, thy will be done. Now, we know from Luke, uh, the angel appeared and strengthened Jesus. But he continued praying even after that. That's when the blood started pouring uh, out of his uh, pores, sweat pores. Hallelujah. So notice Jesus is watching and praying. 
and because he watched and prayed he accomplished his assignment successfully jesus was given the assignment of uh, right producing the redemption for mankind he is supposed to offer himself as the lamb of god upon the cross jesus is being sacrificed there so that man will not be punished hallelujah hallelujah to jesus what produced the victory on the cross and through all the sufferings of jesus watching and pray say watching and pray if you want to fulfill the assignment god has given you you need to learn how to watch and pray right first and foremost you are a watchman over your life you need to fulfill that properly hallelujah if i don't watch and pray in my life right um, <laughs> i'm not going to be successful in fulfilling uh, other responsibilities so we need to learn how to watch and pray notice this is a serious attack of the devil against jesus he is putting pressure on jesus to walk away from the plan of god right but jesus overcame the temptation through watching and praying notice um, um go with me to matthew chapter 4 one other significant incident that we are uh, um, you know that we know about by the holy spirit is this matthew chapter 4 jesus was going to face the devil right the temptations uh, brought by the devil in a very significant manner in a very strong focused manner it's not that he was never tempted before right um, he lived here for 30 years and uh, we know from hebrews that jesus was tempted at all points like us right so it's not that jesus never faced a temptation in his life before that obviously he was faced you know with the different temptations but here there is a focused strong temptation right and um so notice verse 1 starts like this then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and notice the strategic location <laughs> jesus was led to a wilderness in a wilderness is separate from all kinds of disturbance and um, all kinds of distractions where jesus could focus and pray you know he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights what was he doing there fasting praying studying the bible how do we know that because jesus said while trying to deal with the devils now one particular type of devil jesus said um, uh, this kind does not go by except by what fasting and prayer hallelujah hallelujah to jesus now notice how jesus is connecting fasting and praying and your ability to handle the devil there hallelujah hallelujah to jesus in the same way here jesus is going to face the devil in a big way notice how the holy ghost led him to fast for 40 days and 40 nights and pray hallelujah to jesus so when the tempter came jesus was ready again jesus was ready to overcome the devil jesus was ready to face anything the devil threw at him and jesus overcame everything successfully through the word of god notice but it involved fasting and praying hallelujah sometimes we ignore that part of it why was jesus fasting and praying to overcome this eh right? sometimes we uh, ignore we focus only on the word of god that he used yes word of god is the weapon jesus used but the preparation was done through fasting and praying hallelujah hallelujah to jesus now um uh, Let's look at another instance where Jesus um, watched and prayed. Go with me to Luke, Luke chapter twenty-two. Luke twenty-two, verse thirty-one. And the Lord said, "Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat." 
but i have prayed for thee notice the devil was going to come again as to a disciple who was given into the care of jesus god the father gave his disciples into the care of jesus remember how jesus um, uh, prayed in john chapter 17 hold your hand here let's go to john chapter 17 John chapter 17 here Jesus is talking about how he had kept the people who were given to him right notice 17 verse 6 i have manifested your name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world he is talking about his disciples thine they were and thou gave them me and they have kept your word right hallelujah uh jesus said that he has kept them and he has not lost any of them except judas the son of who was going to be uh, betray him and he is going to destruction right so every one of them right who were given to jesus were kept by jesus protected by jesus how did he do it look at verse 11 or uh, let's look at uh, verse 12 while i was with them in the world i kept them in your name those thou gave me i have kept none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled so notice jesus had the responsibility of keeping the disciples hallelujah and one way through which he uh, executed their responsibility is through praying for them hallelujah to jesus luke chapter 22 Luke chapter 22 verse 31 let's read that now and the lord said simon simon behold satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat so notice jesus knew this by the revelation of the holy spirit that's why holy spirit is so important in watching and praying hallelujah verse 32 but i prayed for thee so jesus got this revelation from the holy spirit and based on that revelation he prayed for simon peter that your faith fail not when thou art converted strengthen your brethren notice jesus knew that peter would fall he would deny jesus but jesus did not want him to get destroyed like judas so he is praying for him by the holy spirit right and uh, that prayer helped peter not to go and hang himself right instead he was bitter he cried he repented of his sin and he was converted and he went on to become a leader among the apostles and he was used by god to strengthen his brethren hallelujah hallelujah to jesus you see this is the Uh, impact of watching and praying notice how jesus watched and prayed both in his life right for himself to fulfill what god has given him to obey god fully to overcome temptations and he also used prayer for watching over his disciples hallelujah hallelujah to jesus and we will study more about this in the coming weeks but uh, pray about this ask god to teach you about these things and use you as a watchman and teach you to watch over your life your family and your ministry or your job your businesses whatever has been put in your care whatever god has handed over to you hallelujah hallelujah to jesus watch over your city watch over your nation hallelujah ask the help of the holy spirit the mighty holy spirit will help you hallelujah i'll give you some examples from my own life in the coming days i i thought i will do that you know but the teaching itself has taken time so uh, i will give you some examples of how god helped me to watch over my life or the life of my wife my children my extended family members i'll give you examples in the coming teachings hallelujah hallelujah to jesus thank you so much for listening to the message share this message with other people god bless you jesus is coming soon